Someone made a comment in my video basically saying that my statements on mass surveillance by the U.S. intelligence agencies are fear-mongering. And basically he said he has nothing to fear since he has nothing to hide. So my videos on the spying done to us made him unsubscribe. Now he can suit himself and unsubscribe. Not sure what this kind of person is doing on this channel. But this doesn't change what I want to teach you. And today I will double down on this because it's getting worse. There's been a major change lately. Intelligence agencies responsible for identifying foreign threats are now focused on U.S. citizens. They are calling people with differing beliefs from their definition of a norm, meaning left, as domestic terrorists. Some of you may like this because you think your political side is favored. So you personally feel unthreatened by this. However, I warn you, those that are ill-informed about the past behavior of our government with all sides are equally uninformed about current behaviors. You'd be surprised by the trends in history that show that empowering governments in this way is a threat to all. You'd be surprised at what our government has done in the past, maybe to your political side. What is different today though is the toolkit to implement this surveillance. The government is multiple times more powerful today because of its private-public partnership with big tech. They are able to find anyone with particular beliefs in a much, much more precise and immediate way. Perhaps you are not up to date on the current events relating to technology. For example, about what Apple's doing to its phones or what Amazon has been implementing on their end. And you assume you already know what Google does, which you think is limited to advertising. When you understand the big picture, you see that we are all threatened by many changes, both in the surveillance infrastructure and the intent to surveil for a political purpose. So certain parties in our government have the tools and the desire to manipulate us. Shall we stay silent? Stay right there to discuss. I'm on the platform odyssey.com and I'm now one of the top creators on there. In case I get the platform, please follow me there using the link in the description. And also join my app Braxme, which is a privacy focused social media. My company offers protective tools like a VPN, Brax Mail, and now we have officially begun shipping the Brax2 privacy phone, which is a phone that does not reveal your identity. If you're interested in keeping your identity and information private, these products are on my app, Brax Me. The link is in the description. Young people who do not have the benefit of a past life history to remember recent past events, have the ability to learn from documented history. However, since our communications with each other is controlled, censored, and manipulated, constantly limited points of views are expressed. And some of this historical documentation is swept under the rug. Today, there's a tendency for those in the political right to feel threatened because they have a feeling that the long-term insiders in government, frequently labeled as deep state, have an opposing point of view, meaning deep state leans left in their opinion. But those in the left look at this as an advantage for their side. They clearly don't remember what happened in the past. In the 1950s, left-wing thinkers were ostracized and blacklisted. The most popular coined word of this era was McCarthyism, which related to Senator Joseph McCarthy, a Republican who started investigations of government employees labeled as subversives. If they had leftist beliefs, they were classified as communist sympathizers, and they were investigated, publicly shamed, and often had their careers killed. This extended to blacklisting in Hollywood, and those with leftist beliefs in Hollywood were accused as being traitors to the United States. It's a very sad history because even back then, having alternative opinions was not tolerated. Then, during the Nixon administration, several gay operatives of the intelligence agencies defected to the Soviet Union and, of course, in the process, passed secret information to the Soviets. 
Nixon apparently was so upset by this that he felt that all gays were communists, so he directed J. Edgar Hoover to identify gay people in government to weed them out. Now back in those days, there was no social media or tracking devices that we have today, nor were there centralized databases of every USA person to search for people's beliefs. But clearly the desire to identify and then destroy the lives of the targeted individuals was the objective of the administration back then. Now today things have come full circle. Domestic threats have been identified as parents in school boards who are upset about how their children are being taught with their tax money. Some are categorized as threats because they want to assert their choices relating to vaccinations or masking. Some are considered domestic threats because they are vocally speaking against issues like CRT or even those that disagree with approaches relating to climate change. My point here is to show that historically those in power can attack those not in power. So because of the historical application of this denial of due process to both sides of the political spectrum, it is dangerous to allow this practice to continue because it is ripe for abuse. The fact is that historically the approach has been to crush debate and to make the popular opinion the fait accompli. There can be no variance. This was not only pushed by government directly but by affiliated organizations that were politically favored during the time. Certain groups in the religious right during the Reagan administration promoted the burning of books relating to creationism in their interest to promote fundamentalism in their communities. Now this kind of history built up in the Muslim world simultaneously as well, with the fundamentalism that evolved in Iran and later exported to the rest of the Middle East and provided the impetus for the Jihad against the West. And this of course created the events that led to 9-11 and Osama bin Laden. The point is that governments, be it in the USA or elsewhere, can force populations to conform or threaten that they will be punished. What is interesting about this historical exercise is to highlight that the cause of certain movements to be pushed to prominency like McCarthyism and attacks on those who are anti-vax or anti-CRT or even the weapons of mass destruction is the lack of debate. The media once in lockstep with the agenda of the administration in power then minimize the debate in certain topics. And it got worse as news organizations disappeared and now all mainstream media are just opinion platforms. Adding to the lack of debate of certain issues are the approaches like the cancel culture, the big tech censorship, and the scaring of corporate sponsors and entities. What I'm saying here is that if you think the censorship is positive for your political side today, be careful what you wish for. Because in the future, you may not agree with those in power and your voice can be as easily shut down. History has shown that there are shifting tides in political leanings. Now how does this relate to the privacy threat? The difference today, my friends, is the toolkit to implement the obstruction of countering opinions or the direct attack by law enforcement and intelligence agencies against certain opinions is very different than in the past. My channel has talked about the surveillance infrastructure, the spy devices in our midst which are the mobile phones, but the average person has not realized that this is now a tool of government. This is not just a tool for use by Google or Facebook to sell ads. This is a direct tool for surveillance and the surveillance involves accumulation of data about each individual in this country and the world. Each country will implement different levels of this surveillance, but the USA is supposed to be a country of free speech, but what you didn't know is that some are made to be more free than others. I'm of course careful what I say in social media. Just because I make these statements here doesn't mean I'm willing to say all. I have to hold my opinions back and you will have to read between the lines and expand it in your own way. Let's be clear, there is a database with information on each of us and those with nothing to hide are the ones promoting this collection. Those with nothing to hide don't even realize they have a lot to hide. Making your opinions known in the digital world with no effort to obscure identity puts you in a database 
that allows you to be mapped. Google specifically has a project company with the objective of changing the opinions of people. The Google approach first has to do with identification. Know the people, know who owns each device. Know all devices with a matching technology called cross-device tracking. Know all locations, know all internet addresses called IP addresses. Know phone serial numbers called IMEIs. Someone made a comment in my video that I'm not reaching out to the younger demographics with my comments. So I responded that based on my YouTube analytics, my under 34 demographic base was 25% of my viewers. So my viewership is spread out evenly across ages. Not that that was particularly important, but the individual was surprised because how could Google actually know the age of the people watching YouTube videos? This is part of that identification process. Using data acquired from many sources, Google knows who you are. And don't assume that only Google knows who you are. Amazon knows who you are. Apple knows who you are. Facebook knows who you are the best. And this is not the significant detail. All these companies are government contractors and they are specifically all affiliated with the intelligence agencies. And as was revealed during the Snowden revelations, this private-public partnership exists in a deep way going way back and that this private-public partnership is a big source of profits for big tech. In other words, regardless of what the big tech terms of services claim in their platforms, you will find the big out unless required by law. In the USA, that law is the Patriot Act, which this nation has now allowed without limitations. And now this act is used not against the foreign threats, but against us, the U.S. citizens. And the Patriot Act allows an administration to redefine a threat from the threat of foreign terrorists. The Patriot Act is now focused inwards to be used against any of us. The justification is to call someone a domestic terrorist. There are published memos to the FBI labeling certain groups with differing ideas as violent extremists. The first step in big tech's control of all of us started with identification. Then it proceeded to knowing what we think based on our locations, our movements, our communities, our contacts, our search activities, our comments on social media, our subscriptions to websites, our news sources, each individual is now profiled. This has gotten so sophisticated that Google has a map of people in the USA drilling down to individual Google accounts that are anti-vax. For example, I have a video showing how they can drill down to specific communities in Texas to find these people. Then Google went beyond just identification and profiling. They then proceeded to the next step, which is to change the internet experience of these individuals. The most common way this is done is to change search results. Search for certain topics, and you may find a very limited result set of differing points of view. This, of course, is an active form of censorship, and this is not limited to Google. DuckDuckGo admits to active censorship, and in my testing is even more censored than Google. It definitely has a very left-wing point of view, which is fine, but there's no balance whatsoever, so you're not allowed to form an opinion on your own. Now, given the fact that Google and other platforms have a database which reveals the thoughts and beliefs of every USA person, it is more than apparent to the intelligence agencies what those beliefs are. Beyond the extensive collection of your internet activity on Google search, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, and so on, Realize that the government collects its own independent data and combines that with identity data that you are statutorily required to provide, like tax returns and medical information. For example, it is with absolute certainty that the U.S. government collects all email and all texts and all records of phone conversations. Legally, they're not allowed to record phone conversations but nothing stops private contractors from collecting voice data like from Amazon Echo, Siri, and Google Assistant. Read the fine print, unless required by law. Snowden already revealed that this was happening. And my fear and the focus of this channel 
is that I need to inform you of these devices that collect this information that is using this data against you and I. The typical response I get from the average person is that I have nothing to hide or I'm not important. This is an infantile understanding of the problem. The use of this data need not be at the personal level, although it can be used for things like individual blackmail. The danger of entities knowing what you think is their ability to manipulate what you see and what you hear, which when targeted to certain populations can be used to send well-focused messages that are intended to change points of view and change votes. In other words, allowing third parties to manipulate us means a loss of freedom because without all the information, the population cannot decide things democratically. I don't want to constantly refer to the cliche 1984, which of course is the book that describes this very situation with the antagonist Big Brother. Now, I can even see how close Big Brother is to Big Tech. Let's go back to our own intelligence agencies and deep state and what is happening today. Something that I've been seeing for a while now is being focused on by some in Congress because it is clear that certain long-term employees of the three-letter agencies are dominated by one political side. I don't know what happened. Maybe someone intentionally hired with this as the focus. Maybe there was a litmus test during the hiring to build up a workforce with a single viewpoint. This can also be seen in big tech. Clearly, those organizations are absolutely dominated by one political side. Well, the problem is that the permanent employees of the three-letter agencies, those that are not political appointees, are here to stay. And whatever the leadership in those organizations are, mid-level executives are in control, and that is what most understand to be deep state. And even Snowden acknowledges that deep state exists. Snowden, by the way, also has left-leaning views, but he acknowledges the deep state. So we have insiders in government matched with powerful corporations in the form of big tech, which themselves get funded heavily by the government, and in lockstep with deep state beliefs, and they all have the information and each and every one of us. And so the only question is, do you agree with everything they push? If so, then you will be satisfied. If you think there should be more debate and conversation instead of this extreme divide today, then you will not like what is happening. If you also happen to have an opposing view, then you realize that you are not really free to push that point of view because you will be blunted somehow. Blunted by censorship, shadow banning, and quiet ways to make you disappear quietly into the night. Sometimes I feel that's also happening to me because as I express stronger opinions, then I noticed a decrease in my impression count, which implies that my content is not being shared by YouTube. Chances are this video will receive this kind of treatment. There are many things that have been added to the technological mix to make the collection of our thoughts more of a potent threat. A lot of these threats, in my opinion, come from Apple. Apple has built in a new infrastructure that allows for surveillance of the environment that has never been possible before. Even a simple thing as location tracking. Today, if you have an iPhone, then you can be tracked at all moments. And if you decide that you want to be a little safer by turning your iPhone off, that is no longer an option. When your phone is off, it becomes an air tag tracking you like your set of keys that can be lost. Powerful technologies allowing secret communications have been implemented by Apple and Amazon. The two biggest Bluetooth-based mesh networks have been created by these two companies. This allows direct device-to-device -device communication without an internet. So it even allows sending of locations in this manner. Google started implementing new requirements for two-factor authentication so that they can actually track you using your phone identity called the IMEI. This guarantees they know your exact phone since this IMEI is unique to you. This means your locations, moves, social media activities are all tied to your identity at all times. Amazon's ring cameras are collecting video that are being used for facial recognition and general surveillance. They're your camera, you think, but it is really just a tool 
for the surveillance infrastructure. Amazon Echo, Siri, Google Assistant, all collecting your voice messages and storing it centrally, all because the average person is willing to do this. And again, with exceptions noted for as required by law, it becomes possible to even have conversations surveilled. Some of you will label me as paranoid, but these are again more infantile comments because unlike those who are labeling me, I understand the exact technology being used. I understand that there's even another government contractor that collects this information and processes it for the government, and it is the company Palantir. Palantir is already being used for pre-crime algorithms to identify people who will potentially be gang members, for example. And these individuals are harassed by the LAPD to apply fear. Are these techniques for protection of our community, or could these approaches have led to the hate of the police by some members of our community. Those who think I'm paranoid did not know that the information used by Palantir came from social media, big tech databases, and from cameras in the city of LA doing facial recognition and license plate recognition. If you don't understand the technology being used, you will think I make this up. This is why I often delve into a lot of detail explaining the technology not so that every one of you can repeat my exact words, but hopefully to get the gist of the message that I am not making this up. The threat to our freedom is real. Where is the USA that I'm expecting? Where people debate openly in a free society and then they vote fairly to put our government officials in office. How many of these government officials are actually corrupt and have financial incentives to push agendas that are not ours? What is this system now where the technology we are tied to, meaning smartphones and the internet, are now tools for our subjugation? And yet the average person is not recognizing the risk. At the moment, only those who feel threatened are beginning to listen. But this is not a threat to the right only. This is a threat to all of us. Our right to free speech is slowly being obliterated by the private-public partnership. Our right to stop unreasonable search and seizure has already been eliminated by a direct assault on our thoughts via the surveillance devices in our midst. How has the Patriot Act, which was supposed to focus on external threats from terrorists, been used now to surveil us and we don't care? Biden has even stated his intent to begin censoring our text messages, which many of you haven't actually understood. They can see and collect all your text messages, just like they can see and collect all your email. My channel talks about privacy as the way to personally fight back against this injustice. But what I'm exposing to you today is not just an issue of privacy, but an issue of activism. We need to get angry. We need to reach to our government representatives and say, enough is enough. The government must defend us and not make us the victims. Deep state must be crushed. Big tax collusion must be blunted. Thank you for watching.